So I had this air filter in my bedroom, and we hadn't changed the filters in it for like a decade. And uh, eventually it started making this weird electric zapping sound, and there were these uh, UV fluorescent tubes in it that had burned out and were arcing or something, so I looked at just getting new filters and new bulbs, and it cost more than a new filter would cost. So I scratched that plan, and I thought I could probably just build my own. I saw a little project where someone got a cylindrical HEPA filter and built a little fan cap that went on the top of it. Um, it turns out there's a ton of these on Thingiverse. Um, but none of them had the UV sterilizer bulb, and I figured I didn't want to, like, downgrade from what I had before, although I guess what I had before wasn't really filtering by that point. Um, so I decided to spend way too much time designing this air filter in FreeCAD, and uh, this is my first time using the Assembly 4 workbench in FreeCAD, um, which is actually pretty cool. It does almost everything I want, um, which, I mean, isn't a whole lot. The It doesn't have, like, a mechanical solver thing in it, like a SolidWorks or the actual part design in FreeCAD would have, but um, the basic features are really all I needed to slap some parts together. So if I clip this in half for you guys. You can see the rough design. Um, this is mostly made of 3D printed parts and it's kind of a concentric nested thing. Um, the top of this here has the fan in it that blows air out of this whole device into the room. So it begins by coming in through the wall of this cylindrical helper filter. Um, into this little region in here and the airflow moves down and then up and back down through this little S-bend and this forms a light trap and in this inner chamber here a ultraviolet bulb sterilizes the air and then it exits through another little S-trap into this upper container here uh, and then the fan exhausts it out. Um, sitting on top here is the power supply for this whole unit and it's got little rubber feet so I decided to get to 3D printing, which took like three days. I've got a little Ender small printer here, but I just let it hum in the corner and uh, then I got to putting it together. I designed a power supply for this circuit. Um, it's a capacitive dropper supply. So we'll start on the left hand side. There's a 120 volts AC connection coming in from the wall and that passes through a safety fuse and a MOV that will absorb any transients and uh, surges that could occur on the line. Uh, after that is the two capacitive droppers. There's the top half that uh, supplies power to the fan that extracts the air through the filter. Um, that is dropped down from 120 volts to 12 volts and then is uh, rectified. A uh, Zener diode clamps it to the correct voltage, and then there's a smoothing capacitor in there to uh, keep it steady. And then those then goes to a standard motherboard case fan connector. Uh, the fan only draws uh, 120 milliamps, so there's no significant heating in any of these components. On the bottom half is the capacitive dropper supply for the GTL3 uh, ultraviolet sterilization bulb. Um, it's kind of a weird little fluorescent tube with its own uh, igniter heater filament in there that has a positive temperature coefficient. So once it heats up, uh, the mercury plasma shorts it out and the bulb runs on its own. Um, it's limited to about 10 volts AC, and uh, the AC bit is important because it prevents it from like etching away one of the electrodes inside the bulb. Um, the uh, last part of that circuit is a uh, negative temperature coefficient thermistor that prevents uh, inrush current if you were to turn this thing on right when it's at the peak of a, the AC cycle. I had this little PCB made by uh, JLC and it uh, came pretty fast. Not sponsored or anything, but I use them for a lot of things. Uh, here I am adding an inline switch into the uh, cable and testing the supply. Now this isn't isolated, so the whole thing will 
be live at mains it'll float around 60 volts don't touch it at all it's it's a bad idea um this air purifier doesn't have any external conductive components so it's safe to have that in there now uh, i'm coating the inside of this light trap with uh, titanium dioxide pigment paint um, this absorbs uvc really efficiently and should hopefully prevent it from leaking outside of the light trap where it could uh damage the HEPA filter, it would certainly eat through this plastic, uh, it gives you skin cancer, it kills house plants, it's not good for pets, like, it's dangerous stuff, it's meant to kill things, and you want that staying inside where it's shielded, and only the air being purified gets exposed to it. Of course, while applying this paint, I managed to smear my finger right through it, but uh, it shouldn't really matter. The uh, inadvertent areas that got covered are going to get covered by a layer of tin foil in a uh, later step. Um, that inner area, I actually want the light bouncing around more because it's the, the center of the trap where the sterilization takes place. And I figure the longer that the light spins in there, the more chance it is of actually colliding with a particle, bacteria, virus, whatever's in there. So I'm assembling the uh, two halves of what will become the shroud that goes around the UVC bulb. Um, I decided to print this in two parts uh, so that it didn't have any significant overhangs and I have a whole lot of little fasteners and nuts sitting around so I might as well use them for something. Um, now I'm measuring the foil that's going to be the internal reflector on this um, and once I get it down to size I'm using some uh, 3M spray adhesive. Uh, now this is a tricky part that I didn't really have a good plan to do but I have to coil it up to insert it um, and then once I get it in there, I can press it into the walls. I don't know if maybe it would have been easier to try to spray the inside of this and then put the foil on, but I don't know, it worked out eventually. Um, so that part is later going to get inserted into the uh, top hat shaped piece that's sitting on the right of the screen. Right now I'm installing these little rubber feet I printed out of uh, Ninja Flex, um, and Apparently it worked well with uh, my little Ender 3 printer. Uh, I thought I might have to change the extruder, but uh, it didn't get all jammed up. This is the uh, top of the air purifier. Um, I'm going to hold the fan in with uh, these little rubber grommet legs, but first I wanted to test to make sure it was still working right, uh, and I knew which direction the air was actually blowing out of. Um, unfortunately I have some trouble getting it in because I can't push on a rope or a little piece of rubber all that well, but uh, I figure out the exact sequence and pull it in and off a couple times and then I actually get it in there. Um, this is a the little top cap that the uh, bulb mount attaches to and then on the opposite side of it the power supply sits. Uh, it has this little bracket because it has to get supported on the inside of the uh, cylinder here. Um, so that'll that'll make sense when it gets slotted in. Uh, it was a bit hard to pull those cables through, but it uh, slotted down well enough. I had to use a couple washers because there's uh, large holes in the bracket that didn't really fit my M3 hardware, but uh, I get it in there all right. Now I have to use shorter screws to hold it in um, because they stick upwards and the PCB gets sat on top of it and I don't want it smacking into the bottom of the PCB. Um, there's four little standoffs that, you know, I printed them out but it really wasn't worth it to print them out because they weren't quite the right size. Uh, but I squeezed them real hard and the bolts slid through properly. Now once I get this tightened down evenly on top of that cap, um, I get kind of concerned about whether or not those screws are actually having proper clearance on the bottom of the board and it's impossible to see down there, but it turned out it was all fine. The, the CAD model doesn't lie. Um, and then I twist it around and try to install this uh, center baffle down into there. 
kind of have to reach down with the screws. There is a slight overhanging piece on the inside of this component, um, like a rim that that baffle sits down on top of. Installing a, some of the captive nuts that we're going to need later. Um, of course, I make a silly sequencing mistake here in my rush to put this together. I uh, decide to screw it down in there before I've put the bulb in, and you can't really reach inside there once it's in. <laughs> so I uh, realize that and pull it back out. I decided to clean off the bulb because I've been touching it, and I finger, figure the finger grease might uh, absorb some of the UV and make it less effective, so I rubbed it off with some alcohol. There's the uh, HEPA filter. It sits down on there, and uh, the tolerances were printed out right, so it kind of snugs in, and there's a foam seal on the top and bottom. Um, now I have to get the uh, cord to go in, so I made a little mouse hole in that top cover you can see. And now I have to line it up properly. I'm using two zip ties to prevent it from either pushing into the filter or pulling out of the filter. Um, so once I get that measured and cut up, it sits right where the uh, mouse hole is and everything uh, slides down on top of it. And then there's just some uh, cable management to deal with with that fan cable. Um, but I... Uh, get that folded out of the way. It's a little bit tricky to get the uh, bolts down in there. I guess I should uh, widen the tolerance on some of these holes, but uh, with a little bit of force they eventually slide in and I guess, you know, maybe uh, a good thing that it sits tight and nothing will vibrate itself loose. So the uh, filter, even when put together, is like three separate pieces and uh, when you want to switch out the HEPA filter the top and bottom just pop right off. I do a quick little smoke test with a uh, match just to make sure it's pulling the air in properly. So material wise uh, this cost about half of what a comparable filter uh, you could get on Amazon costs and uh, I've had it running for about a month straight now and it seems rock solid. Anyway uh, thanks for watching through all this. Uh, it's been a long time since I've like narrated or posted a project video, like 10 years or something, but i um, working out this whole camera thing again, and it might be fun to post some stuff that I'm working on.